everyone welcome to geography made easier today we will be covering geography class 8 chapter 2 land soil water natural vegetation and wildlife resources before starting the chapter i will go through the two extracts about the life of two small kids living in two different parts of the world Mamba who is living in Tanzania Africa and Peter who is living in New Zealand if we can see our atlas also this is Tanzania here in Africa and New Zealand in Pacific Ocean and Ireland so let's start in a small village in Tanzania Africa Mamba gets up very early in the morning to fetch water she has to walk a long way and returns after a few hours She then helps her mother in the house and joins her brothers in taking care of their goats. All her family owns a small piece of rocky land around their small hut. Mamba's father can barely grow some maize and bean on it after toiling hard. This is not enough to feed their family for the whole year. Peter lives in the heart of sheep rearing region in New Zealand where his family runs a wool processing factory. Every day when he returns from school Peter watches his uncle taking care of their sheep their sheep yard is situated on a wide grassy plain with hills in the far distance it is managed in the scientific way using the latest technology Peter's family also grows vegetables through organic farming now when we are talking about Peter and Mamba living in two different parts of the world we just ask why different parts of the world have different lifestyles or different lifestyle of the people that is because it is difference in the quality of the land difference in soil water natural vegetation animals usage of technology the availability of such resources is the main reason places differ from each other Now first of all we are taking the resource land. Now how do we define land? The part of the earth that is not covered by water or we can say solid surface is land which is 30% of the whole world. And on this 30% of the land surface which we are having 90% of the population live only on the 30% of the land. 70% of the land surface is either sparsely populated or uninhabited. Now what is the reason for uneven distribution of this population or people living? It can be due to land and climate differences. First of all, why do we have sparse population? Sparse means thin, few people. It is because of the rugged topography, steep slopes of mountain, low lying areas susceptible to water logging desert areas thick forested areas and what is the reason where people live thickly or more population is living it is because of the plain areas where we can easily make anything we want the houses the roads the plains trains etc second is the river valleys most of our ancient civilizations they have settled in river valleys because of the water third is where we can easily do agriculture next comes land use what is land use land is used for different purposes such as agriculture forestry mining building houses roads and setting up of industries this is commonly termed as land use now what are the determinants of this land use we can say there are two of them physical factors and human factors physical factors is topography soil climate minerals availability of water and human factors they are population or people and second is technology the definition you have just learned it in the first chapter i'll repeat it again technology is the application of latest knowledge and doing or making things Next comes classification of land. How do we classify land? 
One classification is land can be divided into private lands or common property resources. Now private land is very clear. The person who owns his land is a private land. Second is commonly property resources. If uh, you belong to rural areas, you must be seeing we have got some property which is common to everyone in the village, like the chopal or the grazing areas. People and their demands are ever growing, but we have got very limited land. Today, the vast changes in the land use pattern also reflect the cultural changes in our society. Expansion of agriculture and environmental activities is leading to major threats to environment. What are they? One is land degradation, landslides, soil erosion, desertification. Now we come to how to conserve our limited land resources which we are having. So we'll take up some conservation of land resources methods. Now the conservation of land resources we have got some uh, of the conservation methods. One is uh, forestation, that we should grow more trees. Second is ra land reclamation. Third is regulated use of chemicals, that is fertilizers and pets pesticides. And fourth is check on overgrazing. Thank you for watching. In the next video, we'll talk up about soil.